What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. Had to see. I mean, it's got the right kind of lift on it for these. These are the Sin Racing F250 uh, KG1 wheels. They uh, just started out there. You kind of like it, kind of don't. Everybody loves to hate it either way, but just uh, seeing what was going on. So today in this video, this is part two. It's not really an unboxing part two, but we're just going to keep working on this truck. So I don't like the stance. I love the truck. Absolutely love the truck. I love the color. I've got it kind of figured out. I'm not going to go crazy with it, but I want it to set a little bit more scale. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to see what it takes to lower the TF2 long wheelbase down and uh, just get it setting a little bit more stock looking. Uh, we probably aren't going to be able to go too far with it, but we got to make some leaf spring changes. Uh, we're going to tinker with the shocks a little bit. And I think we're going to be able to remove these lift blocks that are on here. And I think it's going to get us where we need to be and hopefully add us a lot more suspension flex in the process. So I'm going to pull the body off and put that somewhere safe because I actually, this is going to be strange to hear me say, but I like this shiny truck and I want to keep it as shiny as possible. So we're going to be taking care of this body. Um, I'm sure we'll set it on some wheels and stuff in here and play with it. But yeah, I don't want to mess this up. I'm planning on eventually, whenever the uh, body sets come out for these to buy separately, probably be doing one and making a patina truck just to do it, do an actual short bed that we didn't have to cut up and make ourselves. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So for now, we're going to take this off and play with it. So I think I know what I'm going to do with this body when I do get another one to patina for the chassis. I think this is, this is fantastic. So <laughs> yeah, we may uh, build another chassis for this one. Uh, the other one back there, I cut up the bed a long time ago just to see what it looked like slammed. And so it has no inner bed. It's all cut out the inner fenders and stuff. So this may be the next evolution in that build. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what kind of chassis we can do, but man, it looks good. I just, I, I'm blown away by the shiny body out of all the RC four wheel drive RTRs. This is the best paint job I have ever seen. And I'm, I'm not kidding. <laughs> So let me get this out of the way so we can get it back on track here and start looking at this chassis and lowering it down. All right guys, so step one, took the shock top off, took the spring out. These have a pretty stout little spring in it. We already got springs, we don't need other springs. Uh, luckily these shocks are already greased. Uh, there might've been a little oil in it, maybe some grease or something in there. It makes it move nice and smooth. It's gonna give us some actual dampening like a real shock. So I am just gonna throw this back together without that in there and we're gonna put it back on. These rear shocks bolting straight to the frame. Um, they have a long screw that actually goes into this cross member. So you just want to be a little bit careful getting that threaded back in that as well. All of it. And I got a little bit of shock oil on my fingers. So everything is slippery and uh, be sure to keep track of your spacers. It's crucial to keep that head of that shock away from the chassis rail. And uh, yeah, probably won't be able to tell anything right away with that because these rear springs i don't know why the here see the angle here of our shackle it's almost tilted forward and we don't want that that's i mean it could if this had yeah you could end up doing that arching the springs the wrong way they really should be at least that at ride height so i think we got way too many springs on the back but we're gonna pull these lift blocks out of here i don't know because this has the uh, pinion angle adjusting blocks which is these are a new thing i haven't seen before from rc4 drive i'm sure it'll be something they've got coming separately um, but it does help the pinion angle but we're trying to lower the whole truck down anyway and that is seriously going to give us about at least five millimeters of drop which we probably can't do too much because of these shocks um, i don't want to put a shock hoop on here obviously because we have the bed floor we can't put a regular TF2 rear shock mount on there. We might could make something small and come up here just above the rail, but yeah, I don't know. Um, typically your Trailfinder 2 shocks mount on the back of the axle here and go up to this bracket and mount diagonally through there. And that, that can get tricky to tune because you start hitting your leaf springs with your shock sometimes. So I don't know. I like that it's there because that's more of a scale look. Um, also while you're here, make sure you're 
bottoms of your shocks are screwed on tight as well. Um, if they stuff gets loose over time, especially like I drive these things across the country to shows and things, so um, might have to lock tight even those with some blue lock tight. Not be worth it. So I'm gonna do the other rear shock, and we're just gonna focus on the leaf springs next. All right, so we're removing the rear axle. Typically, you would take like these, you take the shocks off, take these uh, one of these shackle bolts out, and swing it down, and you can get to these bolts. But <clears throat> this truck's setting up so high, we can actually kind of get to them pretty easily. I mean, this, you are running the risk of stripping out your hardware. That one didn't feel like it wanted to go. That one broke free. Good quality tools. These heads on these Bauhaus tools are very nice, hardened. I don't know if they're actually titanium coated. They look like titanium coated stuff. Let me see if this one's gonna play ball. We might do that from over here. Really wanna try to get it down into the bolt. There we go. Perfect. I like to do one side at a time. That way the axle's not floating out in the wind, your drive shaft doesn't come apart, all that stuff. So we'll back these off and we're gonna remove these blocks out of here and see what we're gonna do. One, we might have to run a shorter screw. And two, we might run into problems with the pinion angle. We'll just have to see. They did this for a reason, obviously. Oh, you can see here, the angle, that's the top piece. We pull the bottom one out. Well, we'll take all the leaf springs out too. <laughs> leaf springs are very firm. So you can see what this does here. It gives the axle a perfectly flat place to, I put that on backwards. Come on. There we go. You see, it gives the axle a perfectly flat place to mount on the bottom and your leaf springs come through at an angle. So it tilts the pinion gear up towards the front of the truck. I'm gonna leave one leaf in the back. I don't typically do that. Um, this leaf is, feels very stiff. So we're gonna do that for now. These screws are gonna be way too long. So I'm gonna have to get some shorter screws. Um, but once these break in, then we can come back and add, I like to add the second longest leaf. Um, and then we'll break it in over time and then you might actually be able to come back and add the other one But you don't want to do if you're gonna run this thing fast You don't want to run a single leaf spring. That's that's the key. You'll get axle wrap So what that's gonna do it's gonna bend the leaf spring before and after the axle because the axle is gonna torque so much that it's gonna Just flex the metal before it actually flexes the suspension um, But you can see here. That's it's got Yeah, I think that's gonna work out good. So let me find some shorter screws real quick and we'll skip ahead to the other side all right, so I got the other side caught up. I'm definitely going to be saving these. These There's been many a times in building custom leaf spring trucks where I desperately needed something like that to adjust the pinion angle. Um, I got some shorter screws in here. These are probably six or eight millimeter. Um, it's good to start them by hand first, at least get them in the hole. And then, because these are, we're not coming straight down on top because they're directly above the chassis. And let it just start itself before you really hammer them down. So you can see these leaf springs, the shackles still aren't at the angle I'd like to see, but I'm hoping that they will break in. And we got the axle tightening up. We got a little bit more angle to them. We don't have a whole lot of shock movement. So that's, that's gonna be something we run into trying to lower this. Um, we could switch to a, oh, my leaf spring's stuck over there. We could switch to a shorter shock, which I actually have. So let me grab those real quick. All right, so I've got these Bilstein 60 millimeter shocks and they're a little too short. I think these may be 90s, if I had to fancy a guess. So there's another mount here on top of the axle that this would fit perfect with and it would pretty much reach to the stock top location. But you look at our shaft there, we're not gonna gain any travel out of it. So there's no point in changing it out right now. So that's something we can play with in the future. Um, you can see that's getting the leaf springs Realistically, that's probably the angle that I really want them at all the way down. So we'll see how it sits with the body on it. See what flex and stuff comes out as, as we get there. But for right now, this isn't the right solution to the problem. Um, I love these little shocks. These are what I use on my rat rod kits. Uh, I think it is fifties on the rear and sixties on the front. I believe they come in seventies, eighties and nineties as well. I don't have any of those in my inventory at the moment. So we'll put these up and save them for another day. <laughs> But these are, these are basically the same shock. These are just chrome. They come as branded as Bilstein. And uh, that's the only ones I've seen. I don't think they have white shocks that are in 50 and 60 millimeters at this time. So 
but the back is done we can i can already tell you it's it's lowered um, our pinion angle <clears throat> the front of our axle is perfectly straight now but it is not causing any issue because we've moved the whole assembly up so this is still at about the same angle it was before we did all that to it you can see when we flex it's not causing any drive line issues the angles are pretty even from front joint to rear joint and uh yeah, I think that's gonna work out good. So let's move on to the front. So the front's gonna be a little more involved, um, partly because we already have the inner fenders installed. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take these uh, front shackle bolts out. Those are a larger size, and we'll just pop that out. I've already removed the top shock mounts. I've taken the spring out of the driver's side. I haven't done the passenger side yet, but we're gonna have to flip this up. Um, we might be able to get to it with if we didn't have the inner fenders on yet. So if you just got this kit and uh, you haven't done that yet and you want to do these mods, then that would be the best time to do it. I uh, jumped the gun a little bit. So we'll pull this off. We're probably going to have to disconnect the steering arm and then we should be able to swing the axle right out from under the truck, flip it over and have pretty easy access to it. I'm going to take it off of the servo horn here because that's the easiest one to get to. Pull this thing down. Like I said, on this unboxing, we do have metal servo horn, so that's nice. We'll pop these guys out. Kind of leave everything where we know where it is, and we will flip it over. And now, should, what's the hold up here? Drive shaft. All right, we're gonna pull the drive shaft too. Let me grab the other tool for that. I'll just pull one end of it off and set it aside. And now, so get out of the way. Now we have access to everything. So for whatever reason, this spacer will not come off of that screw. So we're just going to do that shock all here in one piece. And it's got some oil on it already. Pull this thing off, pull the spring out. save those because like on my custom builds and the rat rods and stuff sometimes we have to add stiffer springs to the shocks to handle the weight and we go smaller shock for more realism you got to beef it up a little bit so it can handle the weight of a tent scale rig and now's a good time to oh now it came off <laughs> go figure we we'll put those with the other shock parts so we don't get it mixed up so we can clean the oil off of those while we have good access to them move this up out of the way so this does have a lift block in there it's probably hard to see um, we're going to just remove that and we're going to leave two springs on the front because there's so much more weight on the front of the truck uh, with this big hard body as well as the motor and servo and transmission and everything um, grab the right tool we're just going to pull these out i'll show you that lift block when we get there you can see here this is a nice nice axle these have a updated knuckle design so the uh, link here for the steering has a metal on both sides of it. So it's much, much more reinforced than the uh, older style Yodas are. And it, like I said, it has the XPD shafts in it, which is fantastic upgrade. Those are usually about 40 or 50 bucks. So having those right out of the box is a nice, nice upgrade. Cause that's about the only thing I think the Yoda twos, most, I think pretty much most of these axles are the same. The Yoda twos, the K44s are basically the same internals. Um, I don't know that for a fact, so if you try to swap on different pieces, it may or may not work for you, but that's just my general understanding. So you can see here we've got about a five or six millimeter lift block. Again, we're going to save those for a rainy day. I'm going to pull the smallest leaf off of here. Let's see how this feels. We might try to de-arch this a little bit while we're here. I'm probably going to have to get shorter screws for this as well. I'll put those over here in our maybe pile. We'll take this leaf spring and just stomp it on the table. And I did just discover something. These shocks that I have here, I guess I'd opened them before. These are 50s, even though the package says 60. I just found a 60 sitting over here, and the 60 looks like it might work well for the back. So we might come back and swap those out here in a minute. Uh, we'll get back to that, though. We stay on the front while we've got it all torn apart because we need to figure out if these are going to have to be replaced before we get too far along. 
So, um, where was I? So what I was saying, trying to de-arch the leaf spring a little bit. These are super tense, mainly on the end, but where the holes are is kind of, I'm not gonna say brittle, this stuff is very high tensile strength, but it will crease there if you bend them too much. But we want them to be as flat as we can. If I can get it to stand up on its end and just kind of push it down a little bit. I mean, you can sit here and do this for hours. Um, I've gone as far before as like setting something really heavy on them and just letting them set for weeks. And then, yeah, it does de-arch them over time. Just give it a little bit of, little bit of help here. I'm gonna throw this one back on. I got some shorter hardware. And we'll get it lined back up here with the axle. So I think at, uh, I'm not gonna lock tight these right now because I'm gonna go back eventually and put scale hardware on this entire truck. So I'm not gonna lock tight them, but yeah, this is definitely an area you want to put lock tight. Same thing with some of the shock ends. They like to unscrew these bottoms of the body like to unscrew. Little things like that. You gotta be very careful, make sure these start good and don't cross thread because they do de-arch the leaf spring a little bit as it goes in. And we'll see here, make sure we're not having any clearance issues with our steering arm, it looks good. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side and then we'll start buttoning this thing back up. All right, just buttoning up everything. Again, another place you're gonna need Loctite. I'm not putting it on there yet because we're probably gonna have this part again. So I left two leaves in the front. I did go ahead and swap on the 60 millimeter shocks up here. Um, we're gonna see, hopefully I have another set of those floating around uh, to put on the back. We'll cross that bridge as soon as we get this all done. I think everything is buttoned up here. I've got the steering on. I've got all four of the shocks or leaf spring screws back in, bottom shocks swapped out. So now we gotta do is flip it back over and attach the upper shock mounts. Went ahead and did the other shock. It's a little challenging to get down in there with the uh, nut on that side because the motor's right up against it. But I'm hoping this is looking pretty level, but I still wanna swap out those rear shocks. This, these 60s of the Bilsteins actually did give us quite a bit more up travel. We gotta check for any interference. And we have interference. So this is what I run into with all my Trail Finder 2s when I lower them. The servo horn is hitting the pumpkin, even at, at the back here. So what I typically do is I will use spacers to lift the servo up. So you see, we've got pretty good side to side, but we're hitting that around the diff. So we're not getting any all the way around movement. So we're gonna pull that and uh, probably throw some pretty healthy spacers in there. I'm thinking like six or eight millimeter. So this part can be kind of tedious because we're still attached at the bottom. We're still attached to the wires or zip tied. I'll line it up the best I can. Getting the back in there is the most challenging part. I'm gonna use the pliers, try and set this one in here where I need it. And the magnet from the motor is playing havoc on my pliers. Get the backs in first. Got the longer screws that we took off of the uh, uh, leaf spring mount. <laughs> we'll repurpose those. Get one started. I think they're gonna be the perfect length for this. We'll see if we've spaced it up enough. All right, we got those cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the spacers in the front. Super easy. That wasn't too bad at all. Let's see real quick. And it gets us quite a bit more. We could even go higher, but I don't want to get our, our steering angles too far off. So we're just gonna rock it like this to start with. Oh, dropped the screw. Oh, I should have used a lighter colored carpet when I built this shop. <laughs> all right, put that one in. And this one. These spacers walked around on me. There we go. And we'll go through and tighten all those up, make sure we're not having any other issues. So it doesn't look like we could go much higher or taller of spacer because then our servo horn is going to hit the servo mount itself. So that was a six millimeter. That looks like about all she wrote as far as clearance. 
Now you could get as far as changing your servo horns and stuff around and, and getting different one that stands off further from the servo, but that still works perfect. So I think we're golden there. So let me go look at the shocks, see if I've got any more of those things and uh, look at the back. All right, guys, that, I think that's the perfect height. That looks like a four inch lift, 35 or 33s maybe. I like that, that that nailed it for me. <clears throat> so I did not have any more of the 60 millimeter shocks for the rear, so we've got the other ones on there. It does limit our up travel quite a bit. Um, you can see we're getting quite a bit more in the front. We still are not rubbing the fenders. It's the perfect lift. So I ordered some more shocks. We'll swap them out between this video and the next one. Hopefully they show up that quick. And uh, yeah, I love it. I, this truck just keeps getting better. So we didn't lose any, any travel in the front. We actually gained a lot by tweaking the springs around. I did leave two springs in the front. These springs are still not broken in, so they're very, very stiff. Single leaf in the back. We can come back and add another one later as it breaks in. We don't want the back to sag. Right now, we're not getting quite as much lift because those shocks are limiting us, but it's, this is going to be perfect. I love this truck so much. I'm so glad they finally did this for us. I just can't, I can't even, I can't even. I'm like a high school girl right now. I just love the color, the shiny. It's, it's perfect. I like that it's a different package. You know, they got the Scottsdale emblems, stuff like that. It's going to be cool. So, uh, yeah, next time I think we're actually get this thing out and run. Can't really run it right now with those shocks because I don't want to be limited. It is softer than it was out of the box, 100%. But I want to, you know, give you an honest depiction of how it's going to be. And, uh, yeah. Then we can start doing the fun stuff. Then we can start scaling it out. I've been trying to pick out some license plates for it. Uh, I want to tear the body down a little bit, pull the interior, see if we can spruce it up a little bit. Maybe paint the window trims on the body. Um, I'm nervous to do that because I'm not one of those guys like, Scale Builders Guild who can mask those and paint them, I will mess it up. I use a brush, or not a brush, a paint pen and try to do it by hand. And it, you know, in the patina trucks, I can pull it off, but we'll see. It needs it. It needs a little bit of depth added to it. Um, I would like to add the uh, metal windshield wipers, but they don't fit that great. And we talked about that in the video about it a couple months ago. Um, they just don't quite fit in here. It says on eBay and everywhere that sells them out of China that they're for the Traxxas blazer and the shit and the rc4 drive blazer but they do not fit the rc4 drive on that well without some modifications and i don't want to modify this body so <laughs> we may just pull those wipers off because they they really stick out they're not quite detailed enough for me but i'm loving this truck i think that stance is perfect and i like the tire size with it it's a little big i think a 155 with a, that size of tire would look good have a little more sidewall but they don't make these rally wheels in, in anything but 1.9. And uh, to me, that looks like at least an 18-inch wheel, 20, a little bit more modern, you know. If you built this truck nowadays, you would probably have an 18. And so you could have a disc brake axle on it and stuff like that. Modern things like that, you really need. You really need to do disc brakes on an old truck when you fix it up nowadays. You could probably have an LS under the hood too. But <laughs> this thing is is looking sweet. So... I appreciate you guys watching. Um, always save your little extra parts because these are, I know I'm going to need those one day. Um, Lee spring trucks can be fun. You guys got to tinker with them and have some fun with it. Uh, Trail Finder 2 is still, it has been for nearly a decade now, my favorite truck to, to build and tinker with. Um, if you've got any more, uh, you're looking for more information on the Trail Finder 2 and how to modify it and stuff, go back to the playlist. I've got three or four TF2 builds. Uh, the Forerunner, the old red Hilux, um, I had a blue one at one point, a dark blue one, a light blue one. I got so much information on Trailfinder 2s and tweaking them from all the way from installing the links to, uh, just tuning leaf springs, things like that. Swapping axles, the, the blazer build. I forgot my yellow and white blazer build when the blazer body first came out. It's got the full V8, the GCM transfer case, all kinds of information out there. So, uh, yeah, hope y'all enjoy it. Uh, thanks again to RC4 Drive for uh, letting me review this truck because I absolutely love it. And uh, 
yeah, I want another one. <laughs> I'm going to do a lot of stuff with this body when it comes out. So keep it scale, guys. Be sure to check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and all that stuff. If you want to see what we're working on outside of the videos, see a little glimpse of the future. And uh, yeah, check out rceveryday.com for my rat rod kits. Keep it scale, and I'll see you all next time.